Hello to Cardiology Update 2015. We're here in Davos and I welcome you to the EHJ Today interview. My name is Fabian Nietlisbach. I'm one of the associate editors of EHJ and the head of TAVI at the University Hospital in Zurich. As such, it is a huge pleasure to me to speak today with a legend in interventional cardiology in Europe, Professor Alec Vahanian from Bisha Hospital in Paris. Very welcome. Thank you, Habin. Alec, tell me, in the last years, ever since TAVI started, what were the biggest hurdles that we have overcome to be where we are at the moment? Well, I think there are multiples. There are multiples, but I should say as a sort of introduction, we were very successful because we went, I think, slowly. So the big hurdles could start with the performance of the procedure, let's say. The performance of the procedure in the very early days, we, I think we did, uh, we were the second group in France to start after the, the pioneer, uh, where it was a very, you know, cumbersome procedure. Everybody was extremely anxious. Surgeons were operate, opening everything. We had the heart machine ready. Uh, every, everybody was extremely concentrated. Now, everybody is still very dedicated, but it's becoming smoother and smoother. The procedure in our case is done 90 plus percent under sedation, local anesthesia. The procedure is done without any TEE and the devices are much smaller, which allows uh, transfemoral access in the vast majority of them. We have probably much to refine the way we deliver the device and also we much refine the way we assess the result in the CAS lab and much more uh, standardize the way we follow this patient. But there is a rule. It becomes simpler, but it's not simple. And we should always be ready as a group. That's the first step, let's right. say. Right, so what do you think was was the key point to get there? Was it more the experience that we gained over years? Is it technique? Is it a combination? Uh, what was the biggest achievement? No, I, I think the experience plays a key role. Everybody agrees with that, and I guess you share the, the same experience. Experience is very important, but it is a team, team spirit. That's a great achievement. In the field of PCI, despite what we, was written by our friends in the guidelines and revised the first one, the heart team, re, to me, really was born around the TAVI. The heart team, as it did exist for transplant, came back for TAVI. And now this heart team spirit is there for mitral, is there for plenty of other structural, and may come back for coronary. So I think it's one of the biggest achievements of TAVI, this heart team approach. That's very important. What role has a patient selection? I mean, in the early days, I remember it was only inoperable patients that were treated with TAVI. Now we're moving towards lower risks. What do you think about the uh, importance of patient selection? And let me add the second question to this. Patient selection has become more vigorous, but is it also getting more complicated to select patients? Do we need more investigations to do this? Well, I think that now uh, we should always, working as a team, uh, we should probably change the paradigm. Because in the very early days, we were searching only inoperables. Now we are trying to exclude the patients where TAVI is futile, more than utile, that is to say the patients who are going to die anyway, because we see the long-term follow-up of TAVI. And uh, the Canadian publishes five years, we just published six years. There is a terrible attrition in survival, which is due to comorbidity. So we should do our best to avoid patients who are going to die within a couple of months. There is a very nice paper in European Heart Journal on the terrible combination of dialysis plus AFib. We have to identify this, these patients and there won't be any score helping us here. It's the heart team judgment. So we have to treat patients 
who are going to survive and have a good quality of life. It's not always easy, and here we need a multidisciplinary approach, working more with the geriatrician, working more with the other specialist. For example, we see in some series that 10% of the patients are oxygen dependent. I think it's a mistake because these patients are not going to survive and not sure we help them. On the other hand, we have the temptation of treating lower risk patients. That's something which should be addressed very cautiously now. We are going to have some results in the coming months helping us, but once again, it should be addressed only by the heart team. If in a given center, the heart team accept to treat a patient with you know, this sort of intermediate high-risk patient, I think we could go. But if it's a cardiologist by its own in a center without cardiac surgery who decide to do TAVI in intermediate risk patient, I think it's a big mistake for the technique and for the patient today. It was interesting to hear that you were saying no score can help us. You know that there are many efforts at the moment to create a TAVI score similar to the SDS or a better suited Euroscore, but you don't believe that this will come up and help us in this judgment? You know, you see my gray beard. I'm <laughs> getting very old. The point is, uh, we as human beings are willing to have white or black. The point of fact, there is no magic numbers for scoring, and the, sco the surgical scores are less than perfect. It has been shown discrimination is not good in TAVI patients because they were not built in this population. There are a couple of attempts to find TAVI score. We, we published with Bernard Jung and the French uh, France 2 registry a score. Uh, the Italian colleague published a score and the partner people published scores. These scores are interesting, they do help, but the C-index discrimination is 0.6 something. So they are not perfect and there are plenty of explanation, but let's say it's an effort, but still not satisfactory 100%. Once again, we need the judgment because it's very difficult to put all the risk factors of this highly heterogeneous population in a score. So as long as we cannot put all the parameters, how can we expect a score to make the game? It's impossible. Right. So this is probably making our job as uh, medical doctors important, and that's actually a good sign, right? I think so, yes. <laughs> so if we're Talking about TAVI today, I I'm actually very interested in how you think TAVI will be performed, let's say, in five years. Do you think that TAVI will just be the first line treatment in the future for aortic stenosis? Or is it more becoming uh, an option also for younger patients, uh, having a valve in valve procedure in mind in the future? What is your vision on, on TAVI in five to 10 years? Well, I think, w w where are we now? We see it has been done in 150,000, I don't know how many thousands of thousands. Well, the technique is improving every year, the device are improving. We have results. Complication rate is still there, but decreasing, nicely decreasing. We don't have very long-term follow-up. We have five, six, seven years, but no bad signals. So all these things are you know, making me quite optimistic. So really, if you ask me what will happen in five or 10 years, let's say 10 years, I'm pretty sure that surgery will be performed only in case of contraindication to TAVI in the vast majority of patients with aortic stenosis. Don't speak about aortic rigor, to me it's not the field for TAVI, but I think this is going to happen, 10 years or something like that. Uh, I'm pretty optimistic, but we have to evaluate it very, very cautiously as a team once again. And the surgeon will be performing TAVI. Right. It happens, it happens. But we we'll, should be ready to face this revolution because this revolution will need a complete reorganization of the departments. Um, because if, uh, for example, uh, I think in New York or in other places, they do more than 500 a year, uh, it takes uh, some adaptation. I think the surgeon will be doing TAVI now. And the interventionist should look and should be involved in TAVI more and more. But I don't know how it happened in Zurich, but in her place, for example, there is still a, a structural team and a more coronary team. It 
uh, should be integrated into the training of the young cadre, young interventionists. So we have to, to work on that and uh, to build, maybe not Francesco Maizano everywhere, but have uh, young surgeons involved as practicing uh, interventionists. Yeah, I think that is a very nice final word for this conversation. It was great talking to you and I uh, fully agree that in the future it will be not uh, cardiology and heart surgery, it will be teams and it's a team spirit and it's nice to work with friends. Thank you very much for this, uh, for this outlook and uh, have a good day. Thank you, Fabian.